What three baits should you be using in the month of January? That's what we're going to talk about right now. So before we get started, if you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're new and subscribing for the first time, leave me a comment below and just tell me that you subbed so I can say hello and welcome you to the team. And before I get started, Mark, Sylvia, thank you. I appreciate the gift. A limited edition scum frog that is uh, holiday colors is really freaking cool. And I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. I don't get a lot of things in the mail. But this is awesome. So thank you, Mark and Sylvia. I love you guys. So we're going to break it down in somewhat regions. If you're up north, uh, if you can find open water, you might find some fish. But it's really tough fishing. The ice and the snow, and it's just miserable out. So I understand. In the middle of the country, you're going to start seeing really colder waters. And so we're going to talk about what baits you should use in there. But we're going to also talk about what you should be using down here in Florida or the southern states. And I'm going to give you one bait at the end that, while probably won't be something drastically different, but right now is absolutely crushing fish. And I mean crushing fish. So stick to the end and see that bait. So we briefly talked about being up north. It's, if you can find open water, you can find some fish. Use something that is very slow, something that they, that's gonna hit the bottom. A jig would be perfect this time. In the middle of the country, the water's getting drastically colder. You're gonna see some shad slowly dying off, the ones that just aren't healthy enough, enough to make it through the season. So we're gonna target those that kind of bait, something that looks erratic, slow, also looks like it's dying, but if you can find grass in the middle of the country, you need to fish the grass and fish it slow. You have to remember, these colder days, you're going to have some good days, and when they're good, they're going to be really good. But a lot of the time in January, they're going to be bad days, and you're going to freeze your ass off, and it's going to be miserable. But we're not out there to get a suntan. We're out there to catch fish. So hopefully the baits in this video will help you do that. So down here in Florida or the southern states, Right now we have the cold fronts. If the cold front comes through, you need to fish the, your pond or lake or bank fishing before that cold front gets in. That's crucial right now. You want to use something that is suspending, something that's going to stay in that lower middle water column. Fish are again looking up. But right now here, down here in Florida, January is going to be the time when we're going to start seeing fish heading to the bank to spawn. And again, I got a bait that's going to surprise you that's really working. So the first bait I think you should be using right now in the middle of the country and down south is a suspending jerk bait. Now this is the Stunna and this is a phenomenal one. This is the Thunderhawk suspending bait and this is a little bit smaller. This is pretty much the size that I want to use. I want to use something that's smaller, suspends, that I can just twitch it and pause it. You don't need to cast and just reel it in really fast. Make that long cast, like with this one with the Thunderhawk, it has that balance, uh, weight transfer system that lets allows you to cast this a country mile, but cast that bait, twitch it a couple times or reel it in a couple times and just stop it. Just let it sit. We want a bait right now that isn't a floating bait. We want a bait that either suspends or sinks. So as it stops, it either stays there or it slowly falls down. The bass are going to be looking up. They're looking for warmer water. They don't want to move at all. So you're going to have to make a lot of casts right now in January especially where you're making a lot of blind casts at, at places where you think they can be hiding on edges, on grass edges or corners or in that deep pocket. Cast there. Those baits are going to have to come out at some point in time and bass will sit at an ambush point and just wait for them to get there and just eat. A bass doesn't need to eat a lot right now. It isn't eating daily because it isn't spending the energy to go after a bait. Right now it's just sitting there being lethargic. It's going to see something and just sit there and wait for it to get by and attack it and eat. In most cases a bass might eat once or twice in one week. So you have to make a good cast, good long cast that they won't see the bait make the proper presentation, and just hang on to that rod. One of the things I like to look for in January is a rocky bottom. Why? Rocks will hold heat, and bass will sit on those rocks just to absorb that extra little warmth. 
that little warmth will allow them to be not as lethargic and will allow them to get a little bit warmer and attack that bait. My number two bait I think you should be using in January, a flat-sided crankbait. This is the Spro Outdoor Crank SR55. This is a shallow water one, but it's a uh, flat-sided crankbait that has really tight wobble that I can just cast and slowly reel it in, get it to the diving depth that I want it to be in, and for me it's about three to five feet deep, and just slowly reel it in. I want that tight, tight wobble. I want also something that has a little bit of noise too. Not that the noise is gonna attract them to come find the fish, but in that dingy water, that noise will tell the bass it's coming towards them. And maybe they might reposition themselves to get a better ambush point on that bait. So my number two bait is a flat-sided crankbait. And you can use whatever one you want. This is just one I had that I'm doing a closer look for. And of course, my third bait is a jig. But here's where I'm going to give you a little special a little special thing. Down here right now, a jig that has a weed guard but is attached to a giant eight inch worm is absolutely crucial. This is the Thunderhawk um, 5 8 ounce bait uh, jig. And the reason why this is killing it right now is that when this bait goes down, it sits down and then that tail floats up. So you can put a little bit longer worm on there or a slinko or a cinco or whatever you want and the bass are just attacking it. Most guys down here right now are actually trimming a majority of the silicone skirt off. So it's just the head of the jig, the weed guard, a, a compact, sharp, extra sharp hook and a giant worm. Because when they're flipping it or casting it, they're just wanting it to hit the water and sink straight down. They want it to come straight down and just hit the bottom of the seafloor and let that tail do its work and, and attract the fish. When you get it to the bottom, it's slow, methodical, either just slow bouncing, so it just bounces a little bit, or take your rod and just lift it up and bring it towards you and let it drag and bounce off the bottom of the seafloor. That will send off a little bit of dust or dirt or grass that's on the bottom and attract those bass to come find it. Now again, they're not going to be charging and attacking it. You're going to want to be very slow and methodical with the presentation that you're putting out there for those bass. But it needs to hit the bottom and that tail, that worm will tail will just stand up. But a jig is a great option right now, especially down here in Florida where these fish are in mats and lily pads and they're getting up there to spawn. And that's another video we're gonna do real spoon, soon. Baits you should be using when the bass are spawning. So I hope you like this kind of content. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Are these three baits you're gonna use in January? Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to y'all soon, cheers.